You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. Hi, this is Detlef Schlich and we're diving into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind together with Joe Pickel. Hello. Hi, Joe. Joe. Hey, love. <laughs> hey, it's great to have you here. It's lovely because, I mean, we really, we met in Skibarine and um, we made a long way from Skibarine over here. We had as well two kilometers with all our our uh, our gear. Yeah. We had to walk, which mm -hmm. was quite a ride. It was a hike. It was yeah. a good hike, yeah. Good workout. Yeah. And... Um, It's great, as Joe is a um, very talented comic drawer and a storyteller and a stand-up comedian, musician as well. I mean, I think, um, I don't well, still... I don't really play any instruments, but I, I, I like to mess around with music. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, still, I still think that I still don't know all your, your, your talents. I mean, he told me a little bit today about that, but yeah, so that's why we're here as well, and... Uh, Hi, and great Hi. to have you here in Artitude. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, bud. Yeah. Joe, um, today in the first part, I would say so because I want to, to keep it, first of all, I want to keep it intimate and I put the candles on mm -hmm. because we are my place and... Uh, Very the, gothic considering the rain outside. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite nice. And, uh, yeah. So the candles are on, and um, I would like to to know a little bit because actually I know nothing about your time in um, Joe is American, and um, yep. when you came over from America to to Europe, and as well how how long you've been in America as well. And that, I think this is interesting as well. So, well, I'm from Michigan. Yeah, I live most well. I live probably half my life in Michigan. Moved to Ireland first when I was 17. Yeah. And um, went back to America when I was 27, right in time for George W. Bush's election. So uh, I was I came back right before 9-11. Yeah. And um, I stayed for about seven years, and then I came back to Ireland. And I've been very glad that I have come yeah. back to Ireland because, I mean, okay. Okay. I love it. I love Ireland. Yeah. It's great. It's, it, is, it is great. I mean... And I think as well, it's great that Ireland is a part of Europe. I mean, I don't know if if you if you've been uh, all over the place in Europe already. Do you I've know? been some places, yeah. I've been yeah. to France, Romania, England. Yeah, yeah. So you you Wales. know, yeah. So you know a little bit about Europe. Yeah, yeah. And um, that means you you used to live in Michigan. Yeah, Dearborn, just outside Detroit, about I don't know about five or ten miles. And um, I think Detroit's got a bad rap. I, I love the city. I love in, the town. In, I'm industrial, from. no? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was made its money on, uh, you know. How far was it from Detroit? Motor from, industry. Yeah. How far was it from Detroit? But well, I'd say about 10 miles. 10 miles. That's not yeah. too much, isn't it? Mm. So, so you, if so, yet you, you used to work in Detroit. Yeah, I worked there when I when I lived there. In yeah. you, you, so you used to live in the city well as well. Oh no, no, no. I, I used to live in different parts outside of Detroit. I used to like to go to Detroit, but the place I'm from is actually a place called Dearborn. Okay. And, um, What village? It's, I guess it's famous for being the, the town that Henry Ford lived in for most of his life when he was when he had Ford Motor Company in Detroit. Okay. And um, it's a very 
growing up was a very idyllic. It was a very idyllic place to live in. Very, you know, there was no crime. Population. You know, everybody. Population. Oh shit! I don't know. I don't know. So like Bali the Hop, like Skipper Marine. No, or no, no, bigger than that. Ten thousand. Yeah, probably o around that. Yeah, mm. no. I just, I just tried to. So, so you're more. Uh, I'm sure uh, more than that. I don't know. Jesus. So you're more a country know. boy than, 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 than a city. city well, boy. at this point, I mean, I wasn't growing up, but I've definitely become more of a country boy. Yeah, no, I ask because I used to live 40 years in Cologne. Cologne has a population of one million people. I mean, it's a nice place though, but it's still a city, mm -hmm. and like cities are, they, they often quite um superficial oh, yeah. i mean which is some some are good because it's because of the speed of cities yeah some are good because you can keep your 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 Im uh, uh, immunity so so your your uh, nobody knows you and and uh, you can stay away from from mischief no not from mischief but from from, from rumors. I never i never stay away from mischief <laughs> <laughs> that's why i can't imagine my, that. my career has gone nowhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so i mean as you were in Detroit, did you did you start already with your art in Detroit as well? Oh, geez, you know, in the time I was a kid, I, I loved cartoons, I loved comic books, I loved the Muppets, I loved anything that was wacky, out there, creative, you know. And I just I've never grown up really. That's why I've never made a success in my life. No, yeah, I don't know, you know, because I've never lost interest in any of those things. But I've never actually been able to monetize it, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, so. yeah, we had a chat about how diffi difficult it is to monetize, uh, uh, to make make money as an artist if, if you're yeah. creative, and in a lot of directions you, you're getting off distracted with with your art and with your creativity. Well, you know what? I think part of the problem is that what, what's seen as the most important thing in society is not creativity. You know, that's definitely not what's pushed in education or. Anywhere, you know, they never talk about creativity. They talk about sports. They talk about politics. Sure. They talk about religion. Yeah. But they never talk about, like, you know, well, guess what this guy just came up with? It's the most incredible piece of art you'll ever see. But no, no, no. Let's yeah. talk about something I, else. I, it's yeah. COVID, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, people are not. The bread and circus, so so it's more about the football game than than yeah. than, than about aesthetic, you know. Mm -hmm. So but that's. I mean, I don't have a problem with sports, but I just think you know, give a give a bit of time to the arts too. You know, I mean, they deserve a look in. I mean, look, yeah. if you look at it from this way, when you're a kid, yeah. you're naturally creative, but yeah. it kind of gets yeah. beaten out of you. Yeah, and some, and somehow, uh, unfortunately, you know. But that's the reason why we're gonna do the podcast, and 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 uh, I'm so happy to have have my creative people over here as well, which, yeah. which is great. That's quite cool. So so yeah, so so you didn't you didn't come up with an idea doing stand up comedy in Detroit or no. or music or no. writing or no. What I was into then was drawing, drawing cartoons. You 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 did drawing already the, over there. I did it all the my whole life and i mean it started as a kid so Shh. i developed a very early interest in comic books and cartoons and black and white obsessed with this stuff black and white well all of them it didn't, have to, as well. didn't have to be black and white yeah no sure no it was just mm -hmm. the cartoons themselves if i liked the look of a certain comic or cartoon i just would latch onto it like yeah. you know like say i don't know if you ever had this in germany but there was a magazine that was kind of like a a kind of copy of mad magazine called crazy magazine mm, i don't know no. that was a big influence i mean like real satirical stuff parodies of tv shows and movies and songs uh, uh, and yeah i mean we had to the, fi the yeah. thing was the germans were very bad if it came to 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 satire like this really? i mean the germans they copied a lot from the americans i must say though mm. english uh, i mean flying circus and and uh, oh, yeah. and mad from 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 america they uh -huh. copied it so the humor german humor was quite strange i i yeah. I, I, i never got it really you know really? So it, yeah it was it took a long day they, they start to copy the, the the sitcoms they were trying to copy sitcoms american sitcoms really making it funny and it yeah. didn't work because <laughs> the, the germans didn't have any timing for that you know yeah and i must say i'd like to see some of those ah no no i bet they're really better funny. Better, better not it's a talk show it's, <laughs> i mean they're now the better since the last 10 years they, they they developed but in the 80s i mean we 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 had in the 80s we we were not like america we didn't have pri uh, uh, private television you know mm -hmm. It was all we had more at uh, public, yeah, yeah, which was which was government quite funded, 
it was quite good because you, you um, f I actually I didn't like it as it turned turn out that we all, all almost got 20, 30 programs instead of just three because you, you're getting completely distracted, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it was, that was, it was, but that's, yeah, that's the way. So, so, so yeah, so mm. back, back to, to America. So you, you used to live in, in the countryside of Detroit. And, and no, I wouldn't call it the countryside. No. It was like a city. It was 10,000, okay, yeah. The countryside was probably another 100 miles away. And, and But Detroit was, was completely different, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. quite violent, wasn't it? Well, I never saw any of that. You know, I, I didn't hang around and wait for All right. anything to happen. I, I just go down there as I got older when I, when I lived there and have a beer, have a few beers. And yeah. Go so to some festival or something, you know. So you I didn't you, hang out there really. You, so you didn't go to the to the no go scenes. Well, I did, but I didn't hang around. It was more <laughs> like a they call it a ghetto tourist. Not to be politically incorrect, I don't mean anything offensive by that. But it's just you know I used to want to go and see what like what's going on down here. Why is everybody so scared? And then you go and see it, and you go, okay, that's why they're scared. Yeah. <laughs> some some of the I've, I was just driving by one day. Yeah. After going to I don't know probably just to get something to eat yeah. downtown, you know. Yeah. But coming back, I saw somebody rob the McDonald's, and then as I drove, I, I, he kept up with me, jumping fences to yes. run away from after robbing McDonald's with a gun. <laughs> oh God! <yeah. laughs> just one thing I saw. That 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 was that your first. You was that your first eureka moment to say, "No, I have no. to leave America"? Or what? No, no, no. That no. didn't get me to leave America. No, the, no, it wasn't that. No, no. no. Wow, wow, what, what was it? Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Well, I, I've been coming to Ireland since I was a kid, and I kind of got stuck in America at a certain point. I went over there to get into stand-up com comedy, and yeah. it didn't work, up, work out, and then I just got stuck in Boston, where I'm not from. Yeah. And I didn't like living there, so... Yeah. Coming back here has been like a dream come true because it's like, ah, I escaped from Boston. Escape from Boston. It's like a movie with <laughs> Kurt Russell. <laughs> Escape from Boston. We, we should think about the writing a script. Yeah. That, that's maybe, maybe a musical as well, you know. So sure. Yeah. I'm the kid from Skip from Boston. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's how, that sounds good. So, so it was for you. A paradise somehow coming over from America here to Europe. Yeah, well, did to Ireland especially. To, to, to Ireland. Did did you did you feel anything? Um, I mean, who was president at the time at at you left? Well, I left right when Obama got elected. So yeah. I was there the whole time Bush was president, which is something I used to say on stage. Is like you know, that's my luck. Yeah. I get, I'm, I'm in America for eight years with Bush, and then as soon as I leave, they get Obama, yeah. which you know a lot of people think he was great. Yeah. I'm not saying whether he was or not. I'm just uh, saying it. It's my luck. Bush was a disaster. Then you know you get what a lot of people thought was great with Obama, and I'm gone. But I was glad to be gone, so it didn't matter to me. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Do, do you think your 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 the freedom of speech here is, is 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 bigger than 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 in in America? I don't think people exercise it as much here. I think you could probably say more, yeah, but I don't think people do. I think people say more in America. You know? What I've heard from from stand up comedians over here in in, in um, West Cork is they stopped to do stand up comedian because yeah. because because pubs say no politics and and uh, don't blame the church. You know. Well, you know what? In 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 America, it's more than that, and probably in a lot of other places, it's become this. People get so offended by so many different things now. They they don't know how to take a joke anymore. You know what I mean? It, to me, it's kind of pathetic. It's like, Jesus, a, a joke is still a joke. Yeah, Whether sure. Whether you have, you know, sure. your, your personal feelings about whatever it is they're joking about, it's still a joke. I mean, and it creates as well anxiety if if yeah. you if you all in a sudden uh, can't make jokes yeah. anymore, you know? So, mm. so, so, and you know what? You know, telling jokes about things that people find uncomfortable is a way to relieve people's anxiety about those things. Sure. It serves a function that, you know, I don't think it's really taken into consideration the function that comedy can serve. 
I think as well, so a PC in in, yeah. in, in, in comedy is, 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 is a killer for yeah, comedy. Yeah, totally, you know? then, yeah. You I mean, because the weakest comedians to me are the ones that don't ever talk about anything challenging. They never make you question anything, but they'll talk about the subway and oh, what, what a pain in the ass oh, it is gosh, to be stuck yeah. on people on the subway. Yeah, that's freaking hilarious. You know, we've all been there, okay? Or they talk about the gym. Oh, you know what? Isn't it terrible when you go to the gym and you sweat so much that it, you know your right guard doesn't stop the sweat? It's like, who gives a shit? I, this is not comedy to me. No. You're talking some yuppie friends kind of shit that just doesn't. <laughs> doesn't it's not funny to me. Well, no, I mean, whatever I'm, you're into, to I'm, me, it's just not. And I, I, I know where you're coming from. I mean, the only thing is, and I think why people are laughing about that is because they don't have to be. Um, Be, be, uh, they don't have to worry that 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 they they laugh about something on PC like yeah. you know. So this is 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 this I laugh at myself too. I don't think I'm some kind of like high and mighty son of a bitch, you know. Yeah. It's like psh, there's plenty to make fun of about me, and there's plenty to make fun of about everybody. I I had in the last talk with with Ray McKinley. Hi Ray, uh, we had a chat about censorship in in, mm -hmm. in storytelling, you know. And yeah. and I mean, if it comes to censorship, democracy is gone. You know, that's always the same problem, isn't it? Well, I mean, like what we were saying to that girl we were talking to earlier today it's like the whole idea of questioning things has become taboo if you want to get into a little bit of controversy i think you should be able to question anything and not be considered a nutbag or anything else you know yeah it's your right to to question things and that's my belief and no, i'm not a true. conspiracy nut true i'm not a republican or a democrat no, or anything no. else you know i think for no. myself and i think that's what people should do speech over sorry No, no, that's I'm fair enough. That's that. that's that's great. I really, I really like appreciate that. You know, so 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 how how was it? How was it in, in in around Detroit for you and, and your friends over there? So, um, as a as a people as, as a person who who who's questioning more than other people, was it was it? Could you? Could you really talk with them, or did they try to avoid to talk with you about about well, subjects you, like that? When I left America, I was the last time I actually lived there before I moved there in 2000. I was only 22. Yeah. So, I you know I was more into having a good time back then. But I mean, when I did talk to people about things, I think they thought, I don't know, I don't I don't think people really like to talk about those things and personal terms in america you know so you couldn't start really a discourse with them they they, they were not with a whole lot of people but yeah. it didn't matter because i was having a good time but yeah. yeah i think it's easier here to talk about those things mm, I know. You know? yeah probably probably i mean i mean i mean yeah yeah but not i think i have anything against talking to american people about not anything. at all no, and, and i really about anything but i, I don't want to get into an argument just because we disagree about politics or some horse shit yeah you know and i feel i feel really me. really really pity uh, uh pity about uh a lot of uh, um critical american people with a president like, like this you know i mean that's that's really so they 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 probably suffer as well quite a lot what do you mean from anxiety you know the people that like him or the people that don't like don't him? like him you know? well i think everybody's suffering from anxiety <laughs> because of all oh, of yeah. it sure. i think he's just part of the problem and you know personally if you want to get my personal opinion yeah, sure, i've sure. actually the, thought about this quite a lot and yeah like i said i'm not a republican or a democrat but yeah, i think me neither. trump has been put in there so forever and ever after people whoever goes up for election will say or whoever wins the presidency they'll be able to say well at least he's not trump yeah they've kind of made him as the uh the ultimate bad guy cartoon figure yeah you know what i mean yeah to me yeah Yeah. I mean, I don't hate him and I don't like him. No, but no, no. But I think well, he's a puppet, just like all of them are sure. puppets. I mean, I'm polit politic but in general. But he's the most obvious puppet to my mind. <laughs> At least he's caused so much chaos, man. Which, It's like he, there must be a reason why they put this guy in here. Yeah, I think so. So actually, actually, we we can be happy to have Trump because he's quite predictable somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the other thing is they never shut up about him for four years. It's like I got sick of listening to it. every day something else about Trump, and now. Ever since then, since what March, it's been every day's COVID. 
It's like so. Yeah, per- yeah, yeah no, It so went from the Trump show yeah. to the COVID yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. like, you know what? Both these shows suck. Yeah. Can we put on a yeah. different fucking show? Please? Yeah. On, on, sorry. On, <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. I'm here to promote a kid's book, and I'm swearing and talking politics. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, oh well. my God. Yeah. I what are going to do? I would say, so thank you. This is real life. Kids. <laughs> that is, yeah. Joey, thank mm-hmm. you very much for having you here. Um, thank you for having me. I'm I'm quite happy, sir, um, to learn a little bit about your life in in America. And I mean, we leave it for today because the attention span of our, our dear listeners is just 18 minutes, and we are already over that. Oh um, my God! You stop <laughs> listening to me, you bastards! <laughs> How could you? After I poured my heart and soul out to you, ungrateful bastards! <laughs> All right, see you in the second part. Bye. This is a listener-supported show. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in Friday for the second part of this weekly audio production. I feel honored if you subscribe to this show. You can follow me non-financial with the following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Artitude podcast. Eventually, I would like to thank, through this medium, all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world. Just to remember myself that without you, this year couldn't and wouldn't happen. You have listened to Artitude. West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. RT2, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.